It is Antantum on this 209th uh, day of Russian invasion and the ninth year of war. This is Andrei Shevchenko on behalf of the team of Ukraine Media Center. I welcome all the journalists who are spreading the information about, about our fight for freedom. We have Alexander Starek with us, who is the head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration. Um, Alexander, what are the updates for today? Glory to Ukraine, Andrei. Or to the heroes. Well, the news are quite traditional today. The enemy has been shelling the contact lines. It was a little bit quiet over the past 24 hours, but again, there was fighting raging in some parts of the region. There were 86 shellings, 21 settlements uh, were damaged in terms of civilian infrastructure. We had 54. Um, reports about some houses being damaged and destroyed, some object of social infrastructure, uh, power lines. Uh, the enemy didn't take any active uh, action in some of the parts of the region. It's more about the Parisian and Donetsk region. Our, our army were resisting their efforts and liquidating the life force of the enemy. But yesterday the night was much worse because yesterday we had some missile attacks of the regional center and uh, suburban area. The infrastructure was damaged or transformation uh, station was uh, a target. So the enemy continues destroying a civilian infrastructure in the city of Kravary. We witnessed uh, attacks on hydro objects then yesterday we had our substations uh, well, power stations being attacked we managed to regain uh, the power supply and uh, we will take all the necessary measures to make sure that there is at least some protection for these uh, particular objects that it is strengthened then uh, in the morning there was another attack they had the green uh, part of the city in another neighborhood and they also uh, had one of the villages close to the Parisia. there was one elderly woman age 70 who was uh, wounded no military objects uh, came under attack uh, by the enemy enemy. So again, we can talk about um, civil infrastructures that uh, and, and other settlements. Uh, our people are doing a great job. Uh, they managed to uh, recover everything. So the power is back and they are resisting the enemy efficiently. Has there been any change after the um, successful counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region. Do you see any change in the very manner of the fighting which is being held? Well, civilian infrastructure, especially when we talk about power stations, we didn't really have very many attacks, but now uh, they became uh, more often, but you can see it uh, in terms of shelling. As far as in, in density is concerned, I think that all of you read the updates, information. We do not really have any like, clashes as it was in April or March or early um, June. But we know that they are trying to accumulate uh, powers. We know that Zaporizhia is very important as far as the Kharkiv direction is concerned. That is why we have the presence uh, of uh, the their army forces from Mordor, and they are just deciding on where the forces should go. But what about these changes? Can you really trace this connection with the change which took place in the Harka region? Well, it's, it's all relative because we all communicate the information that we receive from our military management. We know that there is a possibility of an attack, but we know that it is not really possible because it's raining, it's raining that is why. Um, it makes it impossible to intensify the efforts. Well, we have a lot of shellings. Uh, we had 86 uh, shellings. So, so up to 100. Two weeks ago, we had 150 shellings uh, per 24 hours. So it depends. It's either more active or less active. But at the same time, the enemy has accumulated uh, powers, which is sufficient for keeping the border lines. Unfortunately, they had the time to have some protection and they started working on that back in summer and it continued that is why they're trying to hold the border lines 
So what about autumn? What is the meaning of autumn? How can it impact the situation in your area? Well, for us, autumn, as for civilian management, is the beginning of a heating season, and it is uh, quite a challenging issue, especially when talking about an occupied area, provision of other uh, forces with clothes and everything which they need. And uh, also, autumn is also a challenging season for active, um, for active uh, fighting and offensive because it's raining and generally weather conditions they're not really um, conducing for uh, the, for the military equipment to move forward quickly. Well, we know about the shellings, and of course that would be great. Also, after Kharkiv and Zaporizhia, then. So Kumak, today Berdyansk and Erhodar, but these cities are also liberated and we would really want it to happen as soon as possible, but we know that autumn makes it more difficult. And the last question, are there any news from Zaporizhia nuclear power plant? Well, there are no changes as far as Zaporizhia NPP is concerned. Uh, there's a shutdown, so it consumes power from the Ukrainian national grid. It consumes the energy to make sure that all protection systems for cooling off of reactors are working. And we know the the position of uh, the agency, the Atom Agency, and our president. And according to the agency, Russian forces they must leave uh, the power station and to make sure that everything does not end in a nuclear war. There has to be no fighting in this area, and Russians, they sh must leave. In the city of Nerhordar, we keep uh, saying that uh, it's the beginning of uh, the heating season, and uh, they use secondary power sources. That is why we encourage people to leave, to flee these occupied areas. Um, 946 people have left, uh, more than 100 of them are children, and mostly these are people from the Kherson region and those who are in a 30-kilometer area close to the NPP. So we had the head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration with us. Thank you for this conversation, and the next briefing will be with Oksandra Kavar, the Deputy Minister of Finance. Please follow up.